Hey everyone, Senrai Kai here. Today I'm going to be watching the 13th and final episode of Muno Nanana, the talentless Nana herself. So, this episode, I mean, a lot's been building up to this. We have so much going on right now. I mean, on the grand scale of things, we definitely have, like, what well, seems like the big, the big hotshot Tsudu Tsudooka, right? He's supposed to show up on the island itself, right? So that's a big deal. He has some real final about that boss energy to him. We even had a line about guidance or whatever towards Nana, so I don't really think about that line too much when I first when I first saw it, but thinking back on it, like I, I think the implication is that he essentially took care of Nana, like raised her essentially, sent when her parent after you know the parents were out of the picture. I think that was supposed to be the implication there. Which would definitely explain the level of kind of brainwashing that she that she has, you know, the the current state that she's in. Like that line, that brief line about guidance. Really, there was a lot of information actually packed into that. Upon actually thinking about it, but uh, yeah, that can be undone though, <laughs> thanks to the wonderful Michiru, because that was pretty much the note that we ended off on. Michiru has uh, now very very much become like real friends with Michiru. And it's not just, you know, some kind of facade sort of thing. And she got the full-fledged backstory on Michiru, which gave her a very solid understanding of her as a person, right? Because Nana in the back of her mind has had this idea that, you know, there's some secret evilness or whatever to to Michiru, but after all this, she can't really hold on to it anymore. So you get that great scene of her exiting the room and just looking at the estimated kill account, and yeah, I think we have, uh, we've really entered a new state for Nana to really, like, actually self-reflecting what she's been doing, what she should do going forward, and it'll be interesting to see exactly what actions she takes in this episode after, after that. So, we still have the murder mystery thing, like, we haven't really completely solved that just yet, <laughs> like, we have Jin talking to somebody who's probably the culprit, but, it, I mean, it doesn't really tell me a lot. You know, Ren Tato, there was one scene that made him a little bit suspicious, but I, I you know, like, eyes of Rodin, like, very clear sense of guilt kind of face, but, you know, I, I could be reading too much into that, too, so I really I really don't know too much. The idea of, che her, of him cheating on Fuku was thrown out there, but again, you know, who, who knows at this point. But yeah, the only real thing to mention before I get into it, though, is the title of the episode, Revival. Like, there's pretty much two main ways I could take that title, depending on how literal you want to do it. On the one hand, we do we have had Bichidu very much try to enhance her abilities and, you know, revive people, essentially, you know, so it could be a case of her abilities finally evolving, advancing, and she's able to bring back everyone that died, or at least some, some, most, most of the people that died, I don't know, that's one way to take it, or this, or we take it a little bit less literally, and this is finally the episode where our boy Nakajima finally shows back into the fold, right, because, you know, once we got to be about episode seven or eight, you know, I started to think, okay, either Nakajima's not coming back, you know, he really is dead, or the saving this for the final episode, because, you know, once we got to be that, be that point, that's kind of the only option, right? Like, if we're waiting this long to bring him back, it's got to be some big climactic final episode sort of thing, but, you know, if he has just been uh, gone this whole time alive somewhere, my only question is, where has he been? Did he get picked up by a fishing boat and they went? on their merry way for a while and then Nakajima's like, well okay, I'm probably pretty late for class now. I should probably I should be get I should probably get going. You know, thanks for saving my life guys. I really appreciate it. You know, see see you later. I I, I don't know. But you know, Tsudaoka coming to the island will definitely shake things up for sure, one way or the other. He does not seem like a pleasant person. Let's uh let's just go with that. But yeah. With all that out of the way, let's just jump on in. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please click the like button and support me on Patreon for early access as well as the picture in picture version. And let us begin in three, two, one, play. <sighs> it wasn't me. Okay, now I now I get it. Now I get what we're doing. She would never forget that. <sighs> yeah, she's not a pleasant one. Yeah, I really can't blame the child for <laughs> growing up a little bit on the traumatized scale. There's that stupid symbol on the shoe again, so we know that's Sudoka. Definitely not a nice guy. Yes, Michiru. Are you a murderer? This is what I would ask her. Uh, 
Understandable. <laughs> He's a smart guy, yeah. Okay. Right. Like blood? Or glass? Like... Like a broken window? I'm not sure where we're going with this. That's the guy in some other way? Is that... <laughs> that they just broke their way in instead? Yes, yeah, so that would be a big deal. That's one messy room. Right. <laughs> what nice parents. It is possible, but... That's what I was thinking, actually. But it's, it's likely they did. Man, Michi is making so many good points left and right. <laughs> Her smile is gone forever. I mean, it might... It might make her feel less guilty, but I mean, her parents are still dead. <laughs> but I guess this, this in itself is a big deal, so I'll try not to downplay it. Man, Michiru is such an incredible friend. Uh huh. She was really trying to make me tear up again. God damn it. Yeah, that's, of course, that's what she was thinking about. Ugh. It's okay, Nana. Oh God, the, the parents shot. Why do? Why do we gotta do that? <laughs> She's not even that much smaller than me to do. And Sudoku is going to show up and try to undo all this progress. God damn it. I, I'm pretty sure I would say so, yes. Revival. Revival. One thing I did forget to mention that I, I don't want me to, do to, you know, revive a bunch of people because that would probably mean bad things for her and her health. I'd rather those people stay dead. That's not, not a trade-off I want. Okay. I almost thought it was going to be Sudoka himself. <laughs> Are we allowed to do that? Yeah, but that doesn't seem very likely. Because Quinn Ren thought oh, he's pretty loyal. But I...
Yeah, I still don't know exactly what the deal with that is. Yeah, Kiri has a good point. You definitely want to be on your guard until we know what the deal is. I mean, Nana's Donna, avoided murder before, you know. Avoided someone trying to kill her. But she might be been put, put in a position where she has to defend Michiru, though. They are alone right now. <laughs> There's some cute plushing. There we go. The gift given. Uh, just hug you too. I just keep waiting for something to ruin this because I know it is. I know this show well enough. This... As it should be. Ah. <laughs> uh. See even the light of the scene getting darker. And even a beautiful sunset in front of them. You just had to remind her that things are complicated. Is that a bag pretty close? Sora Yafuko. That's suspicious right there. That, that's that's borderline a smoking gun right there. And she's cuddling the pillow. You know, somebody could accuse you of being in love if when you when you act like that. <laughs> He's really not. My cat's sleeping over there. Oh, okay. Some gratitude. Is he gonna is it gonna turn into anything? Yeah, that's a real problem. Yeah, she's a good girl. I don't know why anyone would target Michi, though she did nothing wrong. But there's a good chance for Nana's murderous ways to be used for good. <sighs> Seriously, if they kill off Michi, they, they, they wouldn't dare. Don't say that. I mean, if there's one thing we could get everyone to to band against, uh, band behind is saving Michiru. That's Ren Taro's voice. Uh, I'm pretty sure, like, I'm not positive. It's why we don't meet people in secret at night, Michiru. <sighs> okay, that's why he targets her, damn it. <sighs> it's amazing how quickly he became my most hated character. It's, it's impressive, really. Nana, hurry up. It's, a, it's the scam. The Ore Ore scam. Uh, or that.
Because I was running. S sort of, I mean... I'm gonna find an enemy and kill it. <laughs> Okay. That's some good context for us to have. It's an amazing bow. It's like 90 degrees. Just gonna put a table right in front of her. <clears throat> I mean, what? <sighs> it's such a cute pillow. Hopefully, it does not end up being a memento to remember her by. Just, I'm so worried. <sighs> but he just gives us time, but. So the motive of basically just being a psychopath, I guess, is what it boils down to. A little bit hard to guess that. Uh, God, I hope so. She's complicated, okay. Bad about the Nana right in front of her. You really could not ask for a better friend in life. Ooh! Thank you, Nana, but ouch. Good thing we have a healer right there, but... Man, she was fast. So it's not even here. So it makes it harder to tell you. Okay. Now it explains the window. And you can tell how angry she is. Because she can't. I don't think we have time to lick it. We really have to deal with the enemy. Oh. Uh, I, we really, I don't, we can't get out of this without somebody helping us. I, there's no other way. Maybe somebody can retaliate against his real body. Okay. Are we going to try to do something about the weapon? Oof! Where did that even stab? Oof. Didn't go in too deep, but we're giving Michiru a chance. But I can't see her just running away from Nana like this. <sighs> I 
So we're doing this now. Things were so happy five minutes ago. I mean, I don't... <sighs> it's not a seriously gonna die here. I... You're, you're surprised? Whoa, a hand. On the on the real body, it must be. Kyoya or Jin, it's one of them has gotta be, yeah. Most likely Kyoya. Yeah, because I knew if she was gonna be saved, it would be from that, but at this point, Nana's taken so much damage, I... I'm not sure she's really saved. Her healer's gone. That lie about being able to read people's minds really is kind of a double-edged sword for her, isn't it? It is hard to fight, fight a ghost. Let's split up, gang. Yeah, it's hard to say. Although I think we can conclude at this point that it was not his job. Yeah, we, we don't got time for that. I mean, you two are friends, remember? Back in the day, the video game playing? Just not true friends like her and meet you do. Just casual, hang out once in a while kind of friends. But, yeah. He did something selfless. Yeah, I didn't even think about it, but it is very different than the usual way of doing things. Or cold, calculated methods. I feel like Mijudo is going to come back. I... Oh. oh god, my heart. Oh, she did come back? Unless that's an illusion. I think I think she came back, though. Hopefully it's not too late. It's gonna take some serious healing power. She's definitely on the verge. This might be where the revival comes in. The episode title. Hopefully it's not too much for me to do. It's my big concern. <sighs> I 
Oh, that voice. I mean, I think it's going to work. Just worried about the backlash on her. The episode's not about to end, is it? Uh, please let me meet you to okay. Please let me meet you to okay. You're not doing this to me. I mean, but it's not over yet, right? I mean, we'll... <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> the hair, yeah. <laughs> The pen? Why do you have to show me the pen? Uh. Uh. Just, she's gonna be okay. Stop worrying me. Uh. We have a island full of talents. <laughs> uh. I thought this was the last episode. That was not a. That was not a last episode. I'll double check it. It says it's a 13 episode show, but that definitely did not feel like a final episode. I. <sighs> okay, I mean that was the that was the 13th and final episode of Talentless Nana. I'm just kind of a little bit in disbelief. Like that that was so abrupt. That really didn't feel like the a final episode. I feel like if anything, a penultimate episode. I. You can't just end this. You can't just end the series off on just killing Michiru. That that is not okay. I mean, it wasn't too far off of what I guess on the revival title. Just instead of everyone or most of them, it was just just not a. I'm just not even sure really what to say at this point. But there's obviously more to the story. Just. Because there was talk about Sudu, Sudu Gaoka, whatever his name is, coming to the island, right? I'm pretty sure that was mentioned last episode. And <sighs> Yeah, the story is obviously definitely not over. Like, is this just one of those, you know, screw you, go read the manga sort of endings? I, I guess it could be. I just... I mean, I guess we'll just talk about the episode in general. Like... We had a lot of great, we had a lot of great Nana Michiru interactions this episode for sure. Like last episode, we had the big moment where they crossed that barrier into true, genuine friendship, and we got to, uh, we definitely got to see a lot of the payoff in this episode. Just a beautiful friendship between the two of them, which was great to see. Like the the Nana buying of the presents and all that, that was some really great stuff. You know, her embarrassedness over it and all that was. Really, really good. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit confused why Fuko's clothes was covered in blood if Rentaro was the murderer. Or more to the point, why it was hidden, you know? Because Fuko wasn't killed, I'm pretty sure. Unless that was the implication that Fuko died off screen. I, I don't know. I guess that could have been the implication, but... I mean, did we see her after that? I don't know. But uh, anyway, not not important either way. Just uh, because I knew, I knew we saw we had such great Michiru Nana stuff. Like I knew 
something was going to happen. I didn't know uh, this could just be a, you know, the wishful thinking copium kind of thing, but I didn't think Michi would actually die from it, but I knew there would be some sort of incident where Michi would be in trouble. <sighs> so... I just... just I, I, part of, I'm still kind of just, like, in the denial phase of the Michiru thing. <laughs> like... <sighs> Because of just how abrupt it was, I think. But. Because, I mean. Nana, Nana did finally save somebody. You know, a show full of Nana killing people. For the greater good in her mind. You know, final episode. She's finally made a real, true, genuine friend. And she gives her life for hers, essentially. Or rather... It, that phrase I wrong. Just somebody, I how do I phrase that sentence? She, you know, defended somebody, right? And was going to die, but somebody that truly believed in her, which you know, truly thought of her as a good person, somebody worth protecting and saving, saved her. One of the people that was on her hit list is somebody that saved her. Yeah, I talked before about how her mindset on things had to have changed because of me too, but. You know, just double that or triple that with with what happened there, right? But, I mean, like, yeah, like I said, the fact that Nana was just tanking those stabbings like a boss, that was pretty awesome of her. I mean, definitely some of the the best stuff she's done in the episode, you know, the most good person-like thing she's done in the episode, for sure. After all that cold, calculated murder, you know, we finally get this heroic act from our murderous Nana. Our constantly lying, manipulative Nana. Finally acting like a hero. I almost feel like it would have been better if she just died there, narratively. I mean, I don't know what you'd do without your titular character, but... You know, that would have been a good way for her to go out, and then Michiru could become our main character. Is that, is that so much to ask for? Like, I know Michiru would be sad she lost her friend and all that, but... I, overall, I, I think I'd still take that. As a as as an option, but but I mean it was built up pretty well. The whole Michiru finally been able to bring someone back to life. I mean I know she technically wasn't like fully dead, but this was still like the highest scale healing she's ever done. And you know the the attempt to bring the other people back I think was really good build up for for this where she finally was able to save someone on the brink of death using her abilities. Which she wasn't able to do before. Usually just minor wounds and stuff that she was able to heal. This is definitely the most significant. Because Nana would have died without question. So you can argue semantics about how she technically wasn't dead yet. But for all intents and purposes she she brought her back. She would have been dead without the healing. So you, you can definitely argue that yeah she brought her back in a sense. So and obviously the, the show agrees because the episode title was called Revival. But... Nakajima did not show up, you know, my headcanon of him just rocking out on a boat, fishing, enjoying the sun, getting a nice tan, eventually coming back and saying, hi guys, did you miss me? How many tests did I miss? That, that doesn't look like that's going to happen. But, and you know, Nana and Kyoya seem to be on decent terms, all, all things considered. But, uh, you know, on the bright side, at least we didn't have to see Michiru get stabbed repeatedly. Like, even though she did die, she did do so on her terms, right? Whereas Nana just kept getting stabbed over and over again, which was brutal to watch. And I don't think I could have watched Michiru go through with that. Even getting her, seeing her get scratched on the, the cheek like that wasn't wasn't exactly pleasant. But yeah, repeated stabbings on Michiru. I, I think that would have hurt my soul too much. But, but yeah, that's a big deal, having someone actually call Nana a good person and all that. It's gotta mean a lot to her, but at the same time, losing her first real friend. And that line, too, like, towards the parents, like, that was... Oh, man, that one hurt the soul a lot, too. <sighs> but as far as the, the Rintaro being the criminal thing, I mean, that was a big thing that I thought about. Like, you know, couldn't he just go through the wall and attack him? But my only problem was I wasn't quite sure on the limitations of the ability, right? All we really got was... Going to the bathroom and flushing the toilet, like, that's not really the same as, say, 
hold that knife, for instance, right? Like, to flush a toilet, I mean, it's pretty easy, just like, just like a push, right? Like, uh, if you've seen, the, this is a really old reference, but if you've seen the movie Ghost, you know, starring Patrick Swayze, like, ghosts could interact with things to an extent. They have to get, like, really mad and, like, kick a can, for instance, which is just like a pushing pressure sort of thing. Holding and manipulating an object is kind of a different beast, so I wasn't quite sure if that was within his, uh, within the realm of possibility, but that was one of my, one of my theories that, yeah, Rentaro could have just done that, but depending on how things went. And yeah, that's, that is what happened. But, yeah, I think that's more or less everything I have to say on the episode. I mean, definitely a good finale, aside from the abrupt ending, like I, like I said. Like, because it seems like I just, you know, screw you, go read the manga if you want to get the actual end of the show. I mean, that's still better than an anime original ending, I guess, but I, I, f I feel like they could have ended on a better point than that. Like, I don't know, coming back to the school, I, I at least would have liked them to go back to the school first. I don't know why I would have liked that, but just, I don't know, something about the way it ended off makes me feel like there's going to be a next episode. Just, I don't know, just something about that ending. I know, I know there's not going to be, I know this is the last episode, but it just has that vibe to it. Like, you know, next episode, we start, we started up and Nana's laying in bed all sad, you know, like, but no, we're obviously not gonna, not gonna get that. She doesn't even look dead, she just looks like she's laying there in peace, like I definitely am still in the denial phase. Uh, but, I mean, I guess it can be happy that she's at peace there because I mentioned before, dying on her own terms, and I mean, she really did, like, she wasn't just killed by some random asshole, she... Use her talent for something good, saving her friend, and she can definitely be happy about that. I can't. I can't. But she, she, she can. <sighs> I just I don't know what to really say. It just... The longer I sit here, the more real it feels. But I guess I can just talk about the show as a whole now, right? So... I mean, I guess, I guess I did kind of forget to mention that we did have the, the the reveal on the financial side of things, the money that Nana's getting for this, the money that's being sent to the relatives and all that. So added another layer of of uh, good karma to to the overall situation, right? Like a noble goal attached to this otherwise just you know like murder spree, which does add another level level of you know moral greatness to the situation, and that's kind of what always Nana has always been, you know, a morally great character. Right? I mean, less so at the very beginning, but, like, you know, as the show progressed, they did go more into that. As you learn more and more, you know, especially with the parents reveal and all that, but that's where I started to really ramp up. But even but even early on, you know, it was clear that she saw these people as the enemy of humanity, and, you know, she's young enough where it's obviously these ideas were put in her head by someone and all that, and very much so. But, yeah, the show as a whole, I mean, it was very interesting stuff, you know, we obviously have the big reveal early on, episode one, you know, Nana's true nature, and Nakajima, you know, suffered for that reveal, got just killed, supposedly, I mean, probably, I, but uh, I'm not going to let go of that, man. One day, Nakajima's going to show back up, you know, he'll have a much more powerful talent, he'll tell everyone about Nana, and then kill her off and say, I saved the day, everyone, you know, but uh, I don't know. Anyway. We had that, right? Yeah, throughout the course of the show, we got to see Nana, you know, good girl Nana face with evil Nana monologues in the background, trying to kill everyone one by one, while Kyoya, her arch rival, you know, de 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 detective boy, immortal detective boy, gets to try to, you know, figure it out, figure out that she's a killer, try to figure out the motive, try to, you know, hopefully prevent murders. I mean, I don't think he's been too successful on that for the most part. But, uh, you know, he, he, he does his best. So, and yeah, the dynamic between Nana and Kyoya were, was a fun one. You know, Kira and L, pretty pretty good stuff, right? We have a bit of battle of wits between them. Because it has to be a battle of wits, because Nana can't just kill him. So it kind of kind of has to be that. But and a little element of trying to become friends with Nana was interesting, too. Because that also, kind of like Kira and L, they were sort of friends on the surface. They, they played ten tennis together. At some point, so more attempt to emulate Death Note there. 
And of course, I can't forget the attempt at, you know, very much uh, emulating My Hero Academia. I, I don't know if you call that a parody or what, but they were obviously trying to do some sort of reference kind of thing there. There was just way too many similarities for it to not be intentional. I just don't quite know the purpose behind it, but, but it was funny. So maybe that's all the purpose that it needed to needed to be. But but yeah, I mean, watching Nana kill the students one by one, I don't know if fun's the right word, but I mean, it was compelling to watch, right? I mean, she'd find her target, figure out a reason to go after them, try to figure out their abilities as best she can, how she can work around them to, to kill them. Some people were harder than others to kill, like, for example, time-traveling people. They're not exactly easy, but... You know, she gets it, she gets it figured out, you know, whether it's a time trebler or, or a necromancer. But, uh, she couldn't kill an immortal boy, you know, understandably, but maybe one day. One day she'll find out the secret of his ability and figure that out. But, if the story does continue in the manga, I guess I do kind of just have to read that, don't I? Because <laughs> I can't just stop here, right? If, if the story goes on, I gotta know how it, how it goes, right? I, I kind of don't want to live in a world without me to do, but, you know, I'm too, I'm too invested now. But, I mean, yeah, that one.